All right, hey guys, and welcome back. Now in today's video, we are gonna be making some cheap and DIY planter baskets for a koi pond, a goldfish pond, or really even a turtle pond. So this is super, super easy and very cheap to set up. So you know some plants are obviously aquatic. You have your java fern, your anubias, all those kind of plants that live completely underwater. Well, there's another category of plants where only the roots and stems can be underwater and then the leaves or flowers are above water. That's what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be finding plants that the basically upper half has to be out of water, but the lower half can be in water and we're gonna create a basket that holds these plants at the perfect water level so they can thrive in a koi pond or a goldfish pond or something like that. Very easy DIY and it will brighten up any water feature. So I'm gonna be setting one of these little trays up with this plant right here. Now obviously this is a huge plant. This was only $16 though, so it's a super cheap plant and I'll be showing you exactly how to propagate it off of this and replant it into one of these. You're also gonna need some scissors and fishing line as well as soil or gravel or kind of whatever you wanna actually do the planting in. Technically, you could just drape the roots in. However, I'm choosing to make a planter today where I can hang the planter in the actual pond. So the first thing we're gonna do is fill this up with a fine layer of soil on the bottom. Now, the soil will be able to get through these holes, but we're not shaking this and trying to get all the soil out. Once it's submerged in the water and it doesn't move, the soil will totally stay in here. And most soil is safe for your pond. It's better to buy aquatic plant media for your pond, but regular soil is just fine. Make sure there's not heavy fertilizers in it though, because that could potentially be bad for the fish. Okay, so now that I have a little bit of soil in here, I'm gonna show you how we're actually gonna cut this plant. So what we're looking for here is these little brown roots, so to speak. So you wanna make sure you have a strand that has a little bit over three leaves, so three to four leaves, and then we're literally just gonna cut it right at this little root tip. So I'm gonna come right here, cut this piece off. So as you can see, there's that little brown root right there, and then we're simply gonna place this in the dirt. Now it's not gonna be super set in right now because I don't have that much dirt in, but we're just gonna go through here, and I'm just gonna trim some of these strands off. Now obviously you could literally just take it out of the pot and do it that way, but I wanna use this for more than one of these pond baskets. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of trim it up because this one's kind of overly leafy right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple small cuts and get a few pieces just like this so they can go ahead and take root in the soil and grow. Eventually. Okay, so now once you have something kind of like this where the roots are just kind of lightly planted in the soil, we're gonna be taking some clean pea gravel and dumping this all around them. Now we don't wanna suffocate the bottom of the plants. We're just gonna use this to hold everything in place almost. So you don't wanna do too much. We're just gonna do a very thin layer all on top of the soil and that will not only cap the soil if you have fish that like to dig, it'll allow them to not like be able to dig in there and uproot your plants and it will also hold the plants down. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a whole bunch of gravel down or not a whole bunch, a thin layer down and then we'll get ready to put this into a koi pond. And the finished product should look just like this. Now I would like to put this in my massive koi pond. This is my 1000 gallon koi pond with a whole bunch of large colorful koi and it's really my showpiece. We have some nice lily pads and some plants over there. However, this pond gets pretty hard direct sunlight during the day. It's shady right now because it's the evening and I was thinking about putting something right there, but I'm afraid it's just gonna be too much direct sunlight. So rather than putting them in here, I'm gonna be putting them in my smaller outdoor front pond that only has two small little koi fish and some minnows. And here is that pond. So this is about a 110 gallon pond and I'm gonna try to put the plants to kind of cover up that power cord. So we have a few options for mounting this. Now what I've chosen to do is attach fishing line right here. And the idea is we're gonna hang this kind of like this in the water. So what I'm gonna do actually is take this flat rock right here and I'm gonna drape this over the side and tie all these loose fishing line ends to that rock to act as like a counterweight to hold this above the water at the perfect water level. And now I'm just gonna put this in the water and drop the rock down the back. And as you can see, the rock is holding it perfectly. So now it's at the perfect water height. The leaves can grow in any direction they want and it's perfectly concealing our power cord, which used to be right back there. It's definitely above the water level at the perfect amount and as you can see the water is not cloudy at all so the soil had no issue with water quality. It did not messy up the water at all so we are perfect. So now all we have to do is basically just let it be and that's it. For about probably five dollars you have a beautiful hanging plant basket. Now if you have an in-ground pond like the koi pond in my backyard 
The same way to attach it, you can just kind of float it in there, tie it to a rock, and just throw the rock on the outside of the pond, and it should complete the exact same thing. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and adjust some of these leaves because these leaves don't really like it getting splashed 24-7, and I kind of want them to grow in a little different way. But that is pretty much it for out here. It's a super, super easy and cheap DIY. Three days later. Okay, so it's a few days later and I thought because this video is all about pond plants and cheap pond plants, I thought I would show you some lily pads I just got and how I'm going to put them in my large koi pond. So I already have some lilies down here and they're basically just in a pot, kind of, or like a pond planter basket. And I have another pond planter basket right next to it that I'm going to be putting some more lilies in. So these lilies you see right here were actually free. Someone was like breaking down their little pond planter thingy and gave me all these lilies. So this is a super easy way to get free plants. If you look on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, you can oftentimes get free pond plants for either obviously free or very, very cheap. So what I'm gonna do is grab this little pond basket out of the pond, get these plants right here planted in them, and then see how it looks in the pond. So first thing, I gotta get in the pond and grab that. Now I already had some lily seeds in there, but I'm just gonna throw these in another fish tank right now. Right here by the ducks, I'm just gonna throw them in here so they can grow. Now I'm gonna empty out all these rocks and start getting the root bases of these massive lily plants in there. Now these lilies aren't very tall, so they're probably gonna be underwater for a few days, hopefully until they grow, obviously, to the water surface like those. Later. So I took all the rocks out of this black planter basket, shoved all these lilies in. I'm gonna pull out the ugly and dead ones and then sprinkle some gravel around it so the koi fish don't rip these guys out. But they are pretty sturdy and pretty hardy, so it shouldn't be an issue. Okay, and just like that, there we go. So the idea would hopefully be that these guys sprout up to the water surface just like how these red water lilies did. These guys are green and I'm not quite sure what flowers they produce or what color flowers they produce but we'll find out eventually when they flower. I'm gonna hope the koi fish don't go rampant and try to kill all of them, but that's besides the point. So I hope these guys do really good. Once again, this is a very easy and cheap way to get plants in your pond, is to just scour Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist to find a great deal like this. As for transplanting, it really goes easy most of the time. We'll just have to see how these guys do, to be honest. Three days later. And just like that, it is about three days since we put the lily pads in and look at how much they've grown. They've all surfaced except for a few and the fish only seem to have picked at the roots just a little bit. So everything's remaining super intact and the lily pads are doing really good. Obviously for free, you really just can't beat it. All right, so the two plants we planted today were the golden pothos plant, which is a really, really great cheap option. I've even seen people just hang the roots in a goldfish tank and let the plants kind of flower out of the aquarium. So that is a super cheap, really great plant. It also comes in a variety of different colors of just other different types of pothos plants. It's all the same plant, but there's just different color variations. And then you obviously saw us plant these water lilies, which are another plant where the roots stay submerged underwater, but the lily pads and some of the flowers grow out of water. So there's a whole bunch of plants like this, and we'll be exploring a little bit more of them in another video. So yes, I am gonna be doing another pond video. It's a small mini pond build I have in mind for maybe the front yard, maybe the backyard. I didn't even know where it's going yet, but I will be getting a third pond outside, a mini pond, where we're gonna explore a few different plant options and fish options in a smaller pond, obviously not a 1,000 gallon koi pond because you can't put koi in a small little mini pond. So we're gonna kind of explore some smaller outdoor fish for the springtime and the summertime in the next video. So in order to not miss that video, make sure you subscribe to the channel down below and turn on post notifications so you can go ahead and get notified as soon as that new pond video drops. Last but not least, I just wanted to do a quick update on the turtle. So if you didn't see the last video, we built a new above tank basking area for him. If you want to check out that video about how we made this whole system, I'll leave it down below in the description so you can go ahead and check it out. But he has been up here a few times. I've actually put pellets right at the edge of the ramp and he's ran up the ramp, grabbed the pellets and then run him back in the water. So he's slowly warming up to it, but he's doing super, super good. And I'm really hoping he's enjoying all the extra space that we got him because we were able to fill up his tank all the way up to almost the top with the new above tank basking area, but he is doing really, really well. I would also update you on my freshwater planted tank, but the lights are currently off so you can't see too much. But quick update here, all the fish are doing totally fine. We actually have a ton of fish in this tank, as you can see. There's a lot of guppies and platies in here. I'm not even sure where they all came from. I feel like some of them just kind of showed up out of nowhere. But regardless, these fish are doing really well. And just like that, that is gonna be a wrap for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed watching us get some new lily pads for the pond. 
Live plants always liven up any water feature, whether it's a pond or even an outdoor fish tank, anything, or even just a garden. Plants just really liven up a space, so I'm super happy to be able to incorporate as many as I can into my front yard pond and this pond. I plan to add a few more planter baskets in here soon. I just kind of want to wait until I get the shade situation figured out with those umbrellas up there so the plants just don't get harassed by sunlight because it does get really bad. The elephant ear plants in the back do really good because they stay shaded, so I just have to figure out how to maintain shade over the rest of the pond all day. But the plants we currently have are thriving, so that is awesome. But thank you guys so much for watching and good bye.